Welcome to Plain Air Painting TV, the painting show that takes you out on location. Today, Sue and I, we're down here at the Yarra River in Melbourne. Beautiful morning, lots of things happening. We're going to have a great day of painting. Well, what we're going to paint this morning is this beautiful scene behind me. It's the sun just breaking through in the morning, catching on the water, the trees, casting beautiful shadows, and of course the Melbourne skyline in the background as well. We're going to focus in on the bridge and use that as our centre of interest, and we're going to add in all the people, the activity, the boats on the water, people running by. We're going to have a great time. We'll start off with our drawing and getting that right. Let's just run through the colours we're going to use. A very simple palette here today. We've got ultramarine, cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, and then we've got our earth colours, yellow ochre, burnt sienna and burnt umber. And of course, a good helping of uh, titanium white. Just looking at the scene there, that is actually quite a complex scene. So the key to getting your drawing right here is to simplify it down into the major shapes. That's what I'll be really focusing on here, is um, just getting some of those major shapes in. We'll start out with the bridge, and then block in the river banks and so on from there. So I'm thinking it's around about, it's around about there, which means the other river bank is gonna be around about here. We've got the bridge, which is going to come in right about there. What I'm doing here is just really using the brush to gauge the uh, size of the bridge. Which I think is around about there. It's just a beautiful blue day here today, not a lot of sky to worry about. But it is important that we capture those. Uh, the skyline here. So there's a couple of sort of big buildings there. There's um, an unusual looking shape one here. I'm not going to go for accuracy, just getting in the uh, shapes. It's a nice sort of uh, yellowy, ochery colour building which uh, Oh, it looks like it's the Hyatt. And then we've got this big, big building here, which uh, is really a feature. Um, it's got some nice sort of things happening above it too. All the uh, communications towers and so on there. Stand back and have a look at the composition. Make sure you got that right. And uh, I think we're pretty close. Well, I've got the major drawing uh, sort of mapped in here. Now we're going to look at the sky. You know, there's no clouds in the sky. There's not a lot of interest in the sky. I'm just going to really block in a very simple gray gradation from darker colour down to light colour. So, um, and working around our buildings here. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue. Oop, don't worry too much about that running. And I'm going to add some titanium white to it. Just blocking it in. Not taking too much care at this stage. What I'm doing, I've really mixed it down with the, the thinner, so it's a very light wash, and I'll probably come back into it with a bit more colour as we progress. At this stage, I'm really just wanting to cut in around these buildings. So for now, what I'm doing really is painting in the negative shapes. Now, where am I up to here? This one's... I have to admit, it would be actually quite enjoyable out on the river there today. Nice little uh, tugboat thing coming along. It would be quite pleasant indeed. Just getting uh, to the point now where what we want to do is really start working on these building shapes, getting the, the major colours blocked in here. So I'll just clean the brush. One of the things that I've got in the uh, little bucket here is a screen 
to rub the brush against. I think we'll start off with that yellow building there. Um, going to use some of this yellow ochre. has a tinge of red in it, just a touch. So I'll use a bit of alizarin crimson for that. And titanium white. Now part of it is in shadow. Get in there. Um, does have a shadow side, so I need to get some burn umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue, just to get a dark value, and mix a bit of that in. That'll give us the same colour but shat with a shadow effect. And I'll just uh, run that there. Got some shadows down here. And behind the buildings there, there's going to be shadow. Um, that building's in sunlight, but this one here, the shadow coming across there. Okay. So I've just blocked in some of these shadows with the bigger brush. Now I'm going to use a smaller brush and work on some of the details here and getting the main colours in. So we've got this uh, building in with the yellow ochre here. Um, this main tall building's almost got like a silvery blue colour happening um, down here. It's almost the same, a little bit brighter than the um, sky right, itself. Get um, in there. Obviously, Saturday mornings is a big morning for for uh, rowing activity here on the Yarra River. Well, I think we're getting a feel of our skyline here. Might just leave that there and then move on to the next area. Well, this is going fantastic this morning. Loving painting this scene. I'll see you right after the ad break. Got all the major shapes in now for our city skyline. Now we're getting to the really exciting part, which is the river embankments and those trees and the river. So we're going to first of all focus on the river, get the base of the water in, some of the reflections, then we'll get to work on the river embankment and those trees. And what's really striking me in... Um, Hopefully our camera will pick this up, is that yellow building in the background there, the, the reflections of that, um, just superb. And I'm going to paint water around that. And uh, all going well, it'll uh, look right. <laughs> no guarantees though, of course. But I think it's important to really mix it up and experiment with different approaches. This big building is cast, you know, it's almost a browny grey shadow uh, reflection, I've got to stop saying shadow that's right in through there it's quite dominant now when you first look at the water you might miss all of that altogether you've got to look closely a second time to really um, pick up these things like the reflection of the trees for instance easy to assume Easy to assume that's green, but of course it's not. Now we'll work on the bridge, and that'll um, stand out a bit more when we get going here. So what about the rest of the water here? Well, it's almost a greeny yellow ochre Greeny yellow ochre colour. Notice I'm pulling down. Pulling down on the water here. Rather than painting it sideways. They're always with reflections. Pull them down that way. For me, you know, painting is all about capturing a moment in time. It's not about trying to do a picture perfect, photo perfect kind of painting. It's about getting a feel for the place. And that's what we're doing here today. I'm trying to capture this remarkable scene down here on the Yarra River 
You know, I thought as we were driving up today, I was thinking to myself, it'll be nice, we'll get there early, there'll be no one here. You know, who would be crazy enough to be up at 7.30 a.m.? Well, half of Melbourne by the looks of it. It's one of the things I love about Melbourne. They're such a sport-loving, outdoor-loving city. So much to do here. No wonder Melbourne was voted world's most livable city on many, many occasions. It's just no wonder, really. But if you've not been to Melbourne to paint, and you enjoy a bit of plein air painting, come on down. Absolutely loving painting here this morning on the Arrow River. Let's go and find out what Sue's up to. Well, what a glorious day to be walking down by the river. Now, as you can see, it's quite a murky colour, and that's only because of the clay erosion. Once the Yarra is actually filtered, it provides drinking water to about 2.6 million households. To the original Wu Rud Jerry people, the river was known as Birarun, River of Mists and Shadows. They camped on both banks of the river, especially near present day Government House and the Melbourne Cricket Ground. The name Yarra is attributed to Surveyor John Wedge, who in 1835 asked the local Aborigines what they called the cascading waters on the lower section of the river. They replied, Yarrow, Yarrow, meaning it flows. Wedge's mishearing of the word determined its enduring name today. Oh, what a beautiful day to be sitting here by the banks of the Yarrow. And look at the view. Well, if you're a lover of sport like me, you'll be so happy to be standing here on the Yarra in the heartland of all the sporting venues. To my right, you've got Broad Labor Arena, the home of the Australian Open. And to my left, you've got the infamous MCG, which is home of the cricket, as well as Australian football. Now some interesting trivia about Broad Labor Arena. Did you know that in 2009, Broad Labor Arena was the third highest grossing concert venue in the world? as that was the year that recording artist Pink had a record-breaking 17 shows. The MCG was established in 1853, when Lieutenant Governor Latrobe provided 10 acres of land to Yarra Park to the Melbourne Cricket Club. It has been a major contributor to the development of cricket, the symbolic home of Australian football, and the site of the 1956 Olympic Games. It is fondly known as the People's Ground and is the integral part of sport and culture nation. The world-class stadium received the Aussie highest heritage honour on 26th of December 2005 when it was included in the National Heritage List. On the perimeter of the MCG, there is a parade of champions, a series of statues depicting some great Australian sportsmen and women. On the north side of the river, Further up towards the city is an amazing place called Birra Rung Ma. It is Melbourne's nearest parkland in over a hundred years. And it's a promenade, really, that connects the city to the sporting events. Within Birra Rung Ma are the Federation Bells, which consists of 39 upturned bells cast in bronze alloys and range from 500 grams to 1.2 tonnes. The bells are struck by computer-controlled hammers programmed to play seven different five-minute compositions written by local composers. They play three times a day and can be heard within 100 metres. And in 2010, the BBC and Lonely Planet voted the Federation Bells number eight in the best public art in the world. Well, let's see how Rod's getting on with his painting and I'm just going to have a spot of lunch at the Barbie. Well, thanks for that, Sue. Looks like you're having a fantastic time wandering around the Yarra River here, just working on that far side of the embankment, still getting the shadows and the values right. Try not to disturb our reflections too much. I'm going to go over a few of them with some blue there, rather than having just big blocks of reflection. You know, when the, when the wind hits the water, it can really uh, blow the reflections across like so. So don't be afraid to put that effect in.
important to stand back and have a good look as well. Fantastic scenery here on the banks of the Yarra River. Doesn't get much better. Well, how fantastic is this? Hope you're enjoying the program so far. We'll see you right after the break. So I've got most of the river, you know, the reflections in the water blocked in here. What I want to focus on now is the river embankment and in particular the trees. Now, if you notice the trees, um, there's a lot of dark shadows because of where the sun is and it's still quite low. Within the body of the tree, to give it volume, there's lots of dark shadows. And then there's the highlights on the sunny side. The key here is to block in uh, the overall shape with the dark value. And then we'll add the highlights back on towards the end of the painting. And that'll really make it sing and it'll give the whole tree shape volume. So um, I'm going to create that dark with ultramarine blue, a touch of burn umber. So that gives us a nice dark bluey colour. Okay, so I'm just putting in a massive shape here really, which is the shadow of those trees. And as I get towards the base, I'm gonna green it up a little bit more, some more yellow ochre. Just around the base of it here. Now at that part, we're gonna capture the, uh, the grass, the green of the river embankment. Um, we wanna get that nice bright, green where the sun's hitting it and those dark values to contrast where the shadows are. So for that uh, green embankment there, I'm thinking uh, what we need is some grass colours, so some ultramarine blue and some cadmium yellow I think is uh, going to give us that nice rich green for some darks. Just break up the values here, give a bit of variety in there. So oh, it's a lot of pressure on those uh, young rowers by sounds, winning races and everything. Don't get me wrong, I'm very competitive myself. It's getting very dark over on this side of the board here. Well, we're making great progress here. Now we're at that point where we're up to the bridge and I really want the bridge behind me there to be the focal point of this painting. So I want it to stand out with the right balance of the sunlight hitting it and also the shadows and the little details. Um, there's lots of activity there, cars going by and so on. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time now just making sure we get the, uh, the detail of the bridge right so it really pops out of the painting and becomes the, the, the center of interest there. So I'll start working on that. This bridge is um, an iconic bridge really in Melbourne, giving access to uh, both sides of the river. On one side you've got what used to be the South Bank of Melbourne, I guess, Melbourne City. Um, on the other side it goes across to Richmond, up Swan Street there. sorts of trucks and cars. Let's just pop in a bit of an indication of those. So, there's a green truck. A couple of white cars there. While I've got the white on the brush, I might just put in uh, 
couple little sparkles for the sunlight here. Just where the sun's at its most intensity in the water there. Well, there's lots of little people here for us to play with, so I'm going to put the first person in around about here and, you know, um, put a couple of people in with white, maybe up on the bridge there. As they come closer to you, you're going to be a bit bigger, of course, um, and then we just vary up some colours. So if you can pick out some people, there's a guy just standing over there, if you can pick out some people, um, you know, that you can uh, utilise, then all the better. And as I said, you know, they're just little spots of colour. We're not going for a, a realistic sort of painting, sorry, a realistic picture here like a photo. We're really going for an impressionistic view of the overall scene and atmosphere here. There's a crane on the skyline there. Little details in the back here. Up on top of this main building here, we've got all sorts of things happening. Okay, so I think we're not going to really get what we want with the rowboat person, so I'm going to take matters into my own hands. White canoe. Oh, it's not a canoe. All the rowers at home will be going, this guy does not know what he's talking about. And of course, they'd be right. That seemed to be more like it. Getting to the point, we're almost finished, and it's time to wrap up. I'll leave this subject to someone else to paint another day. Some tools, some skill. Pick your destination and row at it. There's a little something in that for everyone, really. Well, I've had a fantastic morning here, Yarra River in Melbourne, really enjoyed the painting and I feel as though we've captured the essence of the scene, the, the feeling of it, got in all the people and everything that's going on here. Hope you've enjoyed it too. Now, if you want to learn more about Plain Air Painting, drop by our website, you'll see the address on the screen here. We'll see you next week on Plain Air Painting TV. Happy painting. Just going to make a couple of minor little touches. <laughs>